Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. I have a little job here. This is from the air conditioning uh, guy who's sending me quite a bit of work in. This actually belongs to him and it's nothing to do with aircon. So this is off some sort of audio, music system, stereo, whatever, yeah. It's a docking station apparently for an Apple, but he doesn't use it as a docking station. He only uses it to control so volume up and down yeah basically and he says that it's intermittent so if you waggle the wire here the light will either come on or go out so it seems to have a broken connection and usually that happens where the wire is pinched so it's going into the body here he says it's on this end this is like a little multi-pin DIN tap connector. So I don't have the equipment this attaches to, I only have this. Well, let's have a look to see if we can actually find the fault. The easy option I guess would be to cut this off and feed it in. But if I can figure out how to power it up it might be nice just to see if we can isolate the fault more. So it looks like yeah there's some screws under here. Not sure how many. To there. I'll probably have to take this whole thing off and then glue it back on afterwards. I mean, maybe actually, if I undo those two, it might kind of like leave her out. So, hey, why not try? Yes, it levers up, but it doesn't come out there must be one at the other end I guess at least yeah maybe oh I say maybe yeah maybe just one here those are not screws let's see if that will do it nope Looks like there's more. Uh huh. Hopefully, that really is it. Let's see now. Mm. I think I can see there's one more somewhere. No, that's it. Come on. Okay. Right, I have the cover off. So we can see the cable. This is a bit of an unusual one. It's probably a custom type cable. So you can see it has two separate cables inside the outer sheath, if you like. Yeah, so this, I'm pretty sure, must be audio. And this must be the power and various other signals from the controls. Okay, so this is probably like a. Yeah, it's like a rotary encoder, I would say. I'm a bit surprised the audio comes up here. Oh, I suppose from this thing here, it must be able to feed audio, I guess. So, yeah, that makes some sort of sense. So, I don't think I'm easily going to be able to figure out where the problem is. But I'll go by what he says. And I think we'll cut the cable off here. And then we'll feed more cable in. So, it's going to be a bit shorter, but should solve the problem. Yeah. I mean, a very simple method of holding it in place, just a zip tie, nothing very sophisticated here. This would be easiest, I think, if I leave that one on. I'd be interested to see if I have any of these uh, plugs that fit into this. Let me have a look. So I have, like, PCB connectors with all the pins and such like, but these are much 
larger. Okay, so they're not going to help. And I also have these. So I got these off AliExpress. It was one of these special offers, like where you got so many items for like one ninety nine each or something. So I thought these would be useful, and maybe they will be useful. But in this case, no, because these again are much larger than the ones I have in here. Yeah, look, they're too big. So I think I'll have to reuse these. Which, if you saw the video I did on the Shure microphone, the radio mic, where I had some broken wires and a four pin plug, you'll know how difficult that was to do, but that was about a quarter of the size of this thing. These are much bigger, they're just not the same size as the new ones I have. Let's see. To be sure. Well, they actually appear to be glued in. That's the first problem. I mean, I could just take these connectors off and just solder the PCB. That might actually be the easier way to fix this, to be quite honest. Yeah, so that's out. I think it was glued. These are clearly too large, they don't fit. Let me have a look at my stash of like salvage stuff. Uh-huh. That looks like it might fit in there. And then I can literally just like solder onto these wires. Mm -hmm. I have another one, but I think that's a bit longer. Yeah, so let's see if that fits. These are a bit of a pain in the ass when they're glued. I usually find, as you probably saw, get the uh, long nose pliers under one edge. I mean, there's supposedly a clip which like, you push in, but let's see if it'll just get this one. I think it's merely glue holding this in anyway. Then the other end. Yeah, you see that's lifted it a little bit. Okay. So does that other thing fit into here? Yeah, look, perfect. So the easiest way with this one then is cut the cable shorter. I'm really tempted to leave that one alone, to be honest, because I'm sure that the light will be powered off the other one. I think that's what I might do. Let's have a look at it. It all depends how I can strip this back here. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll have to resolder three pins. It's not so bad. But experience tells me this is audio plus ground. Yeah. Right, let's see what we can do with this. So I need to get further back than that. You can see where this has been compressing the wire. That's why it will have failed just here. In fact, it feels a bit like broken there, yeah. So let's try strip back this outer plastic. I'll take this bit of heat shrink off first.
Okay. So this one can go back on. The other one, I've come a little bit more than that. So we'll take a bit more off. Okay. Yeah, so we can see where it was compressed there. So if I cut this one off here, I can then cut this and we'll solder onto here and we'll put some heat shrink. I think that's the best way to do it. So this is where it was compressed. So this needs cutting somewhere about here. Okay. Okay, so we have here, we can see one, two, three, four, five, and the braid. And here we have six. So this one will be the braid. Okay, that's the braid. We can see that. Now, obviously, when I do this, the braid isn't going to go all the way to the end. There's going to be a short bit here. But, you know, to be quite honest, it's not going to make any difference, I don't think. Because the braid is really to prevent noise being picked up down the hallway for this cable. So I'm not really concerned about that. Let's see. I don't know. What do you guys think down there? But I don't think it'll make any difference or cause any problem. So I'm going to start soldering these onto here. Now, I probably have the same colours to some extent. So the ones that are the same colour, I'm going to, you know... Now I have this, so I can see which colours they are here. They're obviously, well actually black, brown, orange, well red, orange, yellow. No, they're not quite the same, but hey, I've got to put them in this order anyway. So let's get soldering. Strip these this way, by the way, flat side outwards. I've mentioned it before, but in case you didn't see it, this makes it much easier. If you go the other way, you probably break the wire. Or cut all the way through it. Something to do with the lobster pot. <laughs> Apparently the lobster can get in but can't get back out again. And this works on the same principle, I've been told. And who am I to argue, yeah? So, nicely stripped. Right. This will be the proof of this technique if I manage to strip these without cutting or breaking the wires. Okay. Yeah. Nicely done. It might be a good idea to put bits of heat shrink on each one first and then you won't forget one later. I've split these far enough back so I can get this quite a way out of the way so it doesn't, you know, effectively just shrink when you don't want it to. Okay. And I'll need one bit more of this because of the one which is the, uh, the braid that I need to put onto this end as well, okay. Like so. If this shrinks first, then the other piece will go over the end of it, if you see what I mean. Or well, you will do when I do the job, if it all goes to plan. So, black first, which is the braid. Just need to get my connector. Yeah, do the same way round. Okay, good. So, black onto the braid. This should also stop too much heat going down there when you don't want it to. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're getting there. The next one is the yellow one to the orange. Uh 
Okay. And then green will go to the yellow and blue will go to the green. And they're in the right order then. Right, that's all of them. Let's put the hitch rink on. We can double check, so the braid is the black, okay, and then the brown one comes in next, and then the orange one comes in next, and then the yellow one next, and then the green and the blue, okay. Let's put it back together. Yeah, looks good. A little bit of orange wire just in there, so we get rid of that, okay. And then we'll need the zip tie on the end of here. If you didn't happen to have a spare connector like that, of course, you could always have cut this off shorter and then done the same and just soldered the wires back together. Yeah, either way, really. But I'm quite happy with that job. And there we go, guys. Yeah, it's not going to go anywhere. In fact, it fits nicely behind there, to be quite honest. So I'll stick this back together. Customer can have it back and hopefully everybody's happy. So simple repair, but... Just a little bit of a play around with the technique. Hope you liked it. And I look forward to seeing you all soon on Learning Electronics Repair. Ciao for now, guys.